applause. Come on, y'all give him a great round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for my wife, Pastor Latoya Harris, looking very nice and beautiful in her pink. Amen. I give God the glory and praise. She's that's her favorite color. Amen. Amen. She looks awesome in her pink. Y'all give another round of applause. We're not going to be too long today. We might cut it a little short today. Amen. I'm talking about the cowboy game. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> I messed with y'all. <laughs> I'm playing with <laughs> I had y'all. Amen. Amen. Seems like we be in church, though. They be winning, though. Every time we be in church long, I look up, uh, 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 Sister Denise, just go, they be up 30 or 40 points. So if y'all want y'all team to win, you got to stay in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. We give God glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for our chief apostle, Dr. Todd M. Hall. Yeah. Hallelujah. Every leader, leader, leader. And I thank God for my leader. Amen. Let's give everyone a round of applause. La -de -da -de and everybody. Let's thank God for Jesus Christ, the heavyweight champion of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That ain't good enough. Come on, open up your mouth. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been ministering on sowing. Amen. Over the past few weeks, sowing. And, and before we really get into it, I might come from a different perspective. But really, before you sow, you got to make sure the ground is right. Amen. You can be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. And sometimes you got to check yourself. And, and I would give you a title now, but I guess I can start with it. Amen. A title be called, some might say a ground check. Amen. Look at yourself as ground. Amen. And also the subtitle might come in a form of a question. What kind of ground are you? Oh, you good ground? Oh, you worthy to be invested into? Y'all ain't going to help me teach today. Hallelujah. Oh, you worthy for somebody to invest in you? Oh, would they have wasted time with you because they know you're not fertile ground? I have no more time to waste time. How many of y'all sick and tired of wasting time with the same people who really don't want change? All they want to do is complain, but they really don't want deliverance. They really don't want to exit, but they want an excuse. Because sometimes God will give you an exit, but instead of you taking the exit God give you, you will have an excuse. I, I feel like, Leandro, this is my exodus. Hallelujah. Somebody say, this is my exodus. And you got to understand what kind of ground are you. I mean, the very first job I had, and I'm not going to be, I have no intention to be long. I know we say it all the time, but I really don't. But the very first job I had around 15, 14 years old, I was considered somewhat, someone say, a gardener. And the job of the gardener is to maintain the grounds. So I was supposed to maintain the grounds. We couldn't use a lot of uh, pesticide because it would kill the crop. So we had to do it the old school way at the Rose Garden. We had to pull the weeds. And some of us got crop, but we got too many weeds. We got too many thorny people. Y'all ain't going to help me teach today. We got too many fake people. We got too many people that are perpetrators. And what happened is they suffocate our growth because we don't want to pull them out the original way. You use pesticide and you end up harming your crop. See, some of us would have harvest if we knew how to get rid of what's not supposed to be. Can I get somebody to shout amen? amen? Can I get somebody to shout amen? amen. Oftentimes, as being a gardener, you also got to learn how to prune. See, sometimes we want growth, but we don't know how to cut things out of our life. Because every type of growth is not healthy growth. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can grow wild. You can grow to be a freak of nature. But oftentimes, you have to be prune for your next level. L let me say it like this, women. Y'all know, sometimes you got to cut the split ends where your hair can grow a little better. Y'all ain't going to hear me talk. Amen. You got to cut them split ends and it seems like you lose it, but you're only losing temporarily. Glory be to God. But in the long run, you're going to gain some more length. Yeah. Some of y'all like, Pastor, I can't gain no more length. It's all right. You can buy some more length. 
Y'all ain't going to help me. I'm preaching in here. You might can't gain no more link because of your genetics, but you can get your bank account ready. Come on. You can cut back. Well, one day you can buy some links. You can buy some links. Don't be tripping because your genetics ain't like everybody else. Genetics, come on, somebody. If you've been faithful, glory be to God. You can buy some links. Hallelujah. Not they, they don't know the difference. I can't get no amens. Hallelujah. And like I said before, if your bank account ain't ready for no Peruvian, you better get that yakky pony. You better get that yakky yakky. Because I believe we got some beauticians in here that'll make yakky look like Peruvian. Or they'll do the very best they can. Hey, Y'all ain't going to help me talking here today. You can't afford no MK pearls. Amen. You better get the knockoff until your finances are down. Y'all yeah, yeah, don't want to hear that. Hallelujah. But the job of a gardener basically is to maintain the yard. Oftentimes, God give us something. We got to learn how to maintain it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to maintain what God gave you. You got to maintain what, what, what he's put in you. You, you got to maintain what he blessed you with. Because oftentimes he'll bless us with stuff, but we don't know how to maintain it. You had your harvest, but you mismanaged your harvest. You sow seeds, uh, but you mismanaged your seeds. Uh, you had the breakthrough, but you mismanaged your breakthrough. Y- y'all can't help me talking here. So now it seems like you need another breakthrough or you need another deliverance because you didn't maintain your harvest. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, maintain your harvest. If you would, I would like you to follow me in the book of Mark, the fourth chapter, starting at the third verse. Hallelujah. Mark 4 and starting at the third verse. We're at good time. When you're there, can I get you to shout amen? If you're not there, say, hold on, pastor. Mark 4, amen. Hallelujah. Mark, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start, amen, at the third verse. We're going to continue on the seed some. We're going to make sure our ground is right. I want you all to be fertile ground. That when people sow and invest in you all, you will, you, you, you will see so much harvest so fast. Glory be to God. I, I believe we're about to be in a season where, where God's about to expedite some things in our life. See, some of y'all been, been on pause for a while, but now it's time for you all to push play. You, uh, hey, man, your life been on pause. You've been trying to figure out what to do next, uh, but now God's about to give you a word, and you're about to push play, where you're about to fast forward into your future and into your destiny. So get out for pause and push play. Push play with your praise. Push play with your worship. Hallelujah. Push play with your commitment. Can I get somebody to shout amen? amen. Mark 4, amen. We're going to start at the third verse. Hallelujah. He sold, amen. He sold, here you go, verse 3, hallelujah. We there? On, okay. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. So this is somebody who was looking forward to sow. Amen. His job was to sow. Go to the next verse, hallelujah. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. I'm going to stop right there. As he sowed, in other words, he sowed. But, but, but he wasn't careful with his seed. Some of us sow seeds, but we're not sowing it into the right ground. It's not fertile, and we expect to receive a harvest and a hundredfold return. Hallelujah. Let me say, or some of us have seeds, but we waste our seed. You wasted your seed because you thought your seed was your harvest. And sometimes we get it confused and think our seed is our harvest and we end up wasting it on stuff that's not going to benefit us later. It's good for your now, but it's not good for your future. Yep. So what happened was some fell by the wayside. He was not careful with his seed. If you waste your seed, you will never see your harvest. I'm going to teach y'all today. If you waste your seed, you will never, ever see your harvest. Because before your harvest come, you got to learn how to plant your seed. Before people treat you right, oftentimes you got to treat other people right. Before people invest into you, you got to learn how to invest into somebody else. 
Y'all ain't going to hear me talking here today. And you've got to be good ground and photo ground that when people invest in you, they're not going to be mad that they did. They're not going to feel like they wasted their time. They're not going to feel like they wasted their energy. They're not going to feel like you ain't never going to change. Why? Because you're good ground. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say I'm fertile ground. Say my ground getting treated today. Like, see, sometimes when you, when you got bad ground, it's because you got a lot of alkaline in it. It's a lot of acidity in it. Glory be to God. But by the time we leave here, I believe what was bad is not about to become good. And some of y'all, truth be told, you haven't been good ground before. Can anybody be honest and make hallelujah and, and, just, and just be honest and say, you know what? I wasn't good ground before. I didn't listen before. I didn't do what they told me before. Some people have wasted their time on me before. But by the time I leave, uh, I'm going to get all the acidity and the alkaline out of my ground. Then when people sow and invest into me, oh, I can't get no help, nobody, they're going to see a harvest. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to see a harvest. Say, I'm going to see a harvest. Some of us don't see the harvest because we wear our harvest. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't going to help me talk. We wear our harvest on our clothes. We, we wear our harvest on our rims. Y'all ain't going to help me. I mean, where did the harvest? The harvest was splurge. All the time he give you a breakthrough, but you can't splurge your harvest. I can't splurge my harvest. I can't. Hallelujah. And it says this, amen, we're going to the fifth verse. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 5. Amen. And some fell on stony ground where they had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Let, let me say it like this. Just because people spring up fast don't mean they're going to last long. And sometimes we get mad because it seems like people getting their breakthrough, but they're getting their breakthrough because they don't got no earth. They don't got no soil, so they don't have no direction to go but up. But before you go up, you're supposed to go down. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here today. So, so we misjudge certain people It's going up as it being God, but they really don't have no depth. I'm not concerned about how high you go. I'm concerned about how deep your roots are. And some of us will never have fruit because we don't got no roots in the ground. This message is supposed to make you have some roots in the ground that when you grow, you shall be like a tree. You shall be planted like a tree where you won't be easily moved when people come your way. You won't be easily moved when a good-looking man come down your road. You won't be easily moved when you're in that same aisle with that woman at Walmart. You won't be easily moved when they offer you a job, but you know you're worth more. You won't. Why? Because you got depth in the ground. Anybody got some depth in the ground? But the Bible say immediately it sprang up. You got to watch when something seems like it grows so fast. Overnight, hallelujah, a real blessing from God. Oftentimes, I'm going to stay back here, it takes time. You might then spring up overnight, but when I get in my season, I'm going to stay in my season. When, when you finally get in your season, you're going to stay in your season. I don't care what the devil say. I believe it's an all-season blessing that's about to hit this church. We're going to stay in our season. You're going to stay in your breakthrough season. You're going to stay delivered and stay free. You're going to stay blessed. You're going to stay prosperous. You're going to stay being an overcomer. Because when I get in my season, I'm not trying to leave my season. Whatever took you to get in your season is whatever it's going to take you to stay in your season. Same thing it took you to get it. The same thing going to take you to, to continue to maintain your season, to keep your season. Can I get somebody to shout amen? amen? Hallelujah. It ain't just a season, but it's about to be a cultural thing for some of you all. Hallelujah. Certain points of, of the earth, it's warm all year long. It ain't never that cold. I believe some of y'all blessings going to be like that. All year I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessed in the wintertime. I'm blessed in the fall. I'm blessed in the summertime. I'm blessed in the springtime. I don't got to wait till no income tax come because I'm already blessed. Do anybody know they already blessed? 
I'm already blessed. No, this ain't no season. This is my lifestyle. I got a blessed lifestyle. This is the way I live. I'm sorry if you're hating and jealous, but I, I can't help God just favoring me because I got seed in the ground. This is the way I live from now on. I live like this. I live like this. I live blessed. I live debt free. I live being an overcomer. I live being delivered. No, I ain't perfect, glory be to God. But I got so much purpose over my life uh, that God can use my mess as a message. This is the way I live. This is the way you're going to be living. Don't let nobody trick you. Season comes and season go. No, baby, I'm going to stay in this season God gave me. The enemy don't mind giving you a season. But the enemy don't want you to have a lifestyle of being blessed. He allowed you to have a season. All right, they're going to have a season, but they're going to do something to mess it up. They're going to say something they're not supposed to say. They're going to do something they're not supposed to do. Then we're waiting on another chance. We wait on another opportunity which may not be guaranteed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You better take this shot like this the only shot you will ever get in your life. Uh, you wait on something that might never happen again. The word chance is not in the Bible. I can't get no help nobody. You better maximize the opportunity that God put in front of your face right now. Someone said, you got, what you going to do with it right now? But it had no depth of earth, no depth of earth. Verse 6, hallelujah. Someone shout glory. glory. Look at your neighbor and say glory. <clears throat> hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. Hallelujah. And sun fell on stony ground where it had no much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Verse 6. But when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root, and it withered away. When the sun went up, trials, tribulations came. Hallelujah. It didn't have no root, so it withered away. Go to the seventh verse. We'll deal with that a little bit later. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew <coughs> and choked it out, and it yielded no fruit. <coughs> In other words, some fell, but it fell on the wrong ground. Amen. And sometimes you can have good seed, but good seed around thorny people will choke the life out of you. Have you ever had a good experience in your life before, but you shared it with a hater? And, and, and they made you think like it would never come to pass, and you shared it with a thorny person, and when you left the conversation, instead of feeling good, you had thorns all in your hands, you had thorns all in your mind, you had daggers all in your back. You shared it with a thorny person who really didn't want to see you benefit. They wanted to see you at the same level. So the Bible says the thorns grew and choked it out, and you didn't yield any fruit. I don't know about you all, but when I sow, I expect to receive a harvest. I expect to receive some kind of fruit. But you sowed it up on thorny places. You had good seed, but your good seed was on bad ground. The ground wasn't till to produce the right kind of fruit you was looking for. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here today. And what happened, your seed was choked out because of negative conversations. Your, your seed was choked out because of jealousy. Your, your seed was choked out because the enemy sowed doubt in your mind. You had the seed and you're looking for a harvest you will never get because you sowed it into the wrong place. Your ground is very important. Amen. Hallelujah. If God don't tell you to sow, you don't sow. Amen. Why are you sowing into people who you will never see harvest out of? You giving your time to people that you will never see harvest out of. You giving your time to a relationship and he'll never put a ring on your finger. You Why are you wasting your time? 
You leaving with sticks and thorns. You you leaving bleeding. You leaving upset. You leaving mad. Y'all don't like me today, but I'm gonna preach. Amen. You leaving hurt. You you leaving despondent. You wasting your time dealing with them thorny negroes. It don't take that long to no man propose to you if he really love you. If he love you, it ain't going to take more than about two years. Maybe three, four, if he really trying to get things together. It shouldn't take no decade. I want to marry you when he's 80 years old. The devil is a lie. You done lost your best years. He can't do nothing for you now. He in a wheelchair. Y'all ain't going to help me. You wait on a harvest you will never get because you got low self-esteem. You got low self-esteem, you'll keep waiting on empty and broken promises. People will promise you over and over again, and they will break them. You, you ain't going to get that harvest until you move on. You ain't going to get that harvest until you transition. You, I, you ain't going to help me. Hallelujah. And some of y'all won't transition, so you will stay praying for a harvest, but the harvest won't come because you don't know how to bust a move. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you wasting your time on a peasant when God got a king for you. You wasting your time. Hallelujah. I, I can't get no help nobody on a chicken head when God got a queen for you. You ought to open up your mouth and give God praise. You got to know you got value in your life. Don't you waste your time on relationships. Don't you waste on your time on some of your family members that still got them thorny mentality. They don't want nothing better for they self. Yeah, I come to church because I want better for me. I want better for my kids. I don't want them to make the same mistakes. I, I, don't, I don't got time to deal with your thorny mentality anymore to choke my seeds. Your mentality will choke your seeds. Your mentality just don't hinder you, but it'll hinder your kids. And it'll be a generation of cursor. You will be trying to break her. Then you got to rebuke it off your kids' kids. But you got to make up in your mind that the book stops right here. Hallelujah. I'm not going to operate in a spirit of poverty, but I'm going to operate in a spirit of overflow. I'm not going to operate in a spirit of debt, but I'm going to operate in a spirit of being free. I can't get no help, nobody. And it's liberal here for you where you can get everything that you need because I'm sowing a, I'm sowing a seed by the word of God. Someone say the word of God is a seed. Look at your name and say, neighbor, say this word is a seed to make me better. Let's go to verse 8. Hallelujah. And other fell on good ground and did yield, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. So when you fall on good ground, not only are you going to spring up, but you're going to increase. Because before they sprung up, hallelujah, but when the sun came, it wasn't there anymore. You need more than just to spring up, but you need to spring up and you need to stay up. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm just not trying to spring up, but I'm trying to stay up. Some of y'all literally trying to stay up. Y'all better not go to sleep on me. I'm going to call your name in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just ain't going to spring up in this season, but you're going to stay up in this season. And increase. And brought forth some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. 100 fold return is the maximum return you can receive. Some of us are want 100 fold return, but we only put 30 fold effort into it. Why are you mad at your sister because your brother getting 100 for a return, but you only done enough to receive 60 for a return? Y'all ain't going to help me. Hallelujah. But oftentimes we get mad at someone else who seem like they're receiving more off their investment, but they invested more. They, they planted more. They, they worked harder. They sacrificed more. And because they done it, they're going to reap the benefits of the harvest God has for them. So don't get jealous of my hundredfold and God just giving you thirtyfold. You ought to thank God that you're at least getting something. So I thank God I'm getting something. But I really want to be in position. Somebody shout, I really want to be in position. 
Say to get a hundredfold return. Matthew 4, skip down, 13 and 15. We don't have a lot. 13, 15. Matthew 4, verse 13 through 15. Hallelujah. And he said unto him, you know this parable. And when all you know all the parables, the sower soweth the word. And these are by the wayside. The word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word which was sown in their hearts. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, verse 14. Hallelujah. Mark. Hey, Amen. I'm sorry. Mark 4. Yeah, Mark 4, 13. Not Matthew. Y'all forgive me. Mark 4. Amen. Verse 13 through 15. Verse 13 saying, Mark 4. And he said unto them, there we go, know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? Verse 14. Let's go. Hallelujah. And the sower soweth the word. Verse 15. Hallelujah. Amen. And these are by the wayside which sowed the word. But when they have heard, Satan come immediately and take away the word that was sown in your heart. So the job of the enemy is to take it away immediately. Because if he know the word continues to be penetrated in your soul, you actually might get that harvest. So he say, I, so he allowed God, God gives you a word, but the enemy, I got to take it away immediately. So as soon as you get a good word at church, here come the enemy whipping on your head. Here come the enemy trying to attack your kids. Here come the enemy trying to attack your marriage. Here come the enemy trying to come and attack your family. But you just had that word that your family going to be brought out, that your marriage going to be whole. The enemy say, I got to come immediately to attack that word. Because if it stayed long enough, you finally going to believe in that word. And you finally going to become what the word say that you will become. So some of y'all going to get attacked immediately when you leave. Somebody shout immediately. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. But I got, but, but, but I'm rooted in the ground. Go to verse 16, hallelujah. And it says this, verse 16, amen. It says, and these, hallelujah, Mark 4, verse 16, amen. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, hallelujah, which are sown on stony ground. When they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness but have no root in themselves, and so endure but a time. But afterward, when affliction and persecution arise, for, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And some of y'all getting attacked because of the word that was spoken over your life. I'm going to let that fester, hallelujah. Because of the word that was spoken over your life, you're going to be tried. You ain't tried because you're awesome, because you're anointed, because you're perfect. You're going to be tried because of the word that was spoken over your life. So it seemed like the word got you in trouble. If the word seemed like it got you in trouble, it's going to take the word to get you out of trouble. Have it seemed like everything was working fine in your life, but as soon as you got that word, it seemed like all hell broke loose? It's because you're being tried because of the word. The pastor then told me, I'm going to get a brand new job. I'm going to get a car. Then all of a sudden, they fired me immediately. Oh, I can't get no help, nobody. Yeah, I got a testimony. I got a good prophecy one day. Oh, you awesome man of God. You integral. God going to use you. He going to set you free. She had the right tongues in it and everything. She had the right look in it. Remano shikamai. You're, you're, you're going to be awesome. God going to use you. You're going to be an entrepreneur. I got that word on Saturday, but by Wednesday they called me a few years, about four, three, four, five years ago, and what happened was they called me and said, don't come back to work. I was tried because of the word that was spoken over my life. And the enemy came immediately to test my faith. Oh, I can't get no help, nobody. I can't get no help. And my wife had to preach at a church, but I didn't want to sabotage her studying, so I didn't tell her until she got through. Y'all ain't going to help me. Where's some of teacher when they tell people certain things? Because some of y'all will tell stuff at the wrong point, and you'll discourage somebody else when they're about to get their breakthrough. Oftentimes, they can't handle your mess right now. You got to wait for the right time. 
So, so you got to wait. We got to wait for the right time. So I didn't know what to do. All of a sudden, an idea came in my head. You know what? Let's do a summer program. Amen. And we've done a summer, we done a program that summer for kids. But all of a sudden, it, 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 we was making more without the job than what we developed. And I, I can't get no help. We made more without a job, but with a business idea than what I had with a job. Oh, I can't get no help, nobody. It helps supply finances for the church and also for me personally. And some of y'all assisted in that vision. I can't get no help. I was tried because of the word, because the word was spoken over my life. Uh, I done what the woman of God said, and my summer was taken care of. Uh, and some of y'all going through a season right now, and God says it's already taken care of, uh, and it's already done. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say it's already done. Say it's already done. Let's go to verse 18. Hold on. Stop right there. Arises for the word's sake, and immediately they are offended. Hallelujah. I want to stay right there with that word offended. Somebody shout offended. You think you like us until we offend you with the word. You say you submitted to us until you offended by the word. When you really get offended by a word you don't like, that'll really test your loyalty. Yeah, I can't get no help. Because you ain't going to like everything I say. You might not agree with everything that come out of my mouth. But your loyalty is tested when you become offended and you still can stay there. You still can say, preach, pastor. You still can say, ouch, hit me anyway. Let's continue on because I know I need that. See, when, every, when you're getting the words you want to hear, you good. But what happens when a word don't appease to your emotions? And you get in the words you don't want to hear. And you feel offended. And when you feel offended, you'll feel like God leading you somewhere else. Because you was offended in the word. Because you thought the word was directed towards you. And God can't tailor made the message for you to get your breakthrough. Somebody say, not man. But somebody say, but God. You receive the word with joy. With gladness, but when tribulation and trial came, hallelujah, glory be to God, the enemy came to smuggle out that word. Somebody shout glory. glory. Go to verse 19, hallelujah. Go to verse 18. We'll go to 18, hallelujah. And these are which were sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Verse 19. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and lusts of their things entering in, Choke the word and it become unfruitful. What happened is you start thinking about a worldly system. Amen. When you think about a worldly system, it will negate God's principles. Hallelujah. Ooh, I can't get no help, nobody. You'll think about a worldly system over God's principles, and it'll take out the word God spoke over your life. Yeah, oh, y'all yeah, can't, can't get no help, nobody. Huh? Because the worldly system will tell you, be, be sure to pay all your bills, and if you got something left for your tithe, pay your tithe. That's what, the, that's what a corner-minded person will tell you. But my God didn't tell me that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these other things which should be added unto you. I, if he can feed the fowls and the birds of the air, which most definitely he can feed and take care of you. See, your ideology is based on your worldly system, and it ain't got you nowhere for 20 and 30 years. Why not try the kingdom way for one year and see God bring you out of debt? And see God set you free. And see, God allow you to have more than enough. I don't care what your daddy say, what your mama say, what your brother say. You got to do it God's way or it won't work if you're hearing this kind of word. Y'all can't get no hurt. But the problem is you don't want to test the word because you don't trust God. God say, try me and test me and watch me open up the windows of heaven where you will not have a room enough to receive. And some of y'all will never have heaven open up for y'all because you won't try God long enough. Give your tithe time to work. You done it for one month and you expect a million dollars. You got to be kidding me. This ain't no lottery. You faithful with giving and sowing and doing right by people for two weeks, uh, and you expect people to bless you within one day. 
You got to give it time to work. This system works. If it wouldn't have worked, God would have never put it in the Bible. So you ain't calling a man or woman of God a lie. You call him the word of God. I, I don't care who. I know it works for me. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, if it worked for me, it can work for you. Say, if it worked for you, I know it can work for me. If you believe that, open up your mouth and Shabbat God. Open up your mouth and give God praise all over the place. Don't. Open up your mouth. Some of y'all faith increasing right now. Some of y'all car got just got released. Somebody house just got released. Another van just got released. The land just got released. Oh, open up your your promotion just got released. You've been faithful. You, your contract just got released. Your twenty thousand dollar raise just got released. Oh, it works. I ain't finna make everybody pray. Somebody say it works. You getting caught up in what people say. Forget what they said. I know what God said. I was on my way one day trying to pay my rent, and God say, that ain't the rent money. That's the money you're supposed to sow and give into your man of God. A couple of months turned around, and I had an unexpected money on a card came out of nowhere. You can't tell me God's system don't work. You can't tell me God don't release miracle money sometimes. You can't tell me God won't meet all your needs. I know he'll do it. He done it for me more than one time, and if he done it for me, I know know he'll do it for you. Open up your mouth and give God glory. Come on, open up your mouth. Problem is you think folk trying to take away from you when the word is trying to add to you. You, you, you thinking about subtraction, sir, and God is trying to multiply you. Y'all yeah, ain't going to hear me talking here. You, you, your mind has been subtracted uh, uh, doing the principles of God. And since your minds have been subtracted and doing the principles of God, you will never experience the favor of God. If you don't be obedient to God's principles, you will never experience God's favor. Pastor can't pray it over you. Pastor can't prophesy it over you. You got to get it by working the word of God. I don't care how accurate I am as a prophet. The prophetic word is only based on the condition if you be obedient and do the principles of God. You waiting on a prophetic release. God say, I'm waiting on you to release the principles. You waiting on a supernatural prophetic release. But God said, I'm waiting on you to get the principles right. When you get them principles right consistently, you won't need a miracle. You won't need a supernatural miracle all the time. When principles are practiced, as my man of God said it, miracles are not needed. And I believe this is going to be such a principle-minded church of glory be to God that God's favor is going to saturate over everybody that can be obedient to the principles of God that you will never have to live in lack of, that everything will be taken care of. Open up your mouth and give God glory. I got three amens in the front, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Open up your mouth. Somebody give God praise. Yeah, it's going to be a little rough today. Why? Because we're getting the ground right. Yeah, yeah, we're getting the ground right. Hallelujah. That you will be consistent. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Say, consistency It's going to be my key to my breakthrough. Say, consistency It's going to be my key to my deliverance. Don't be faithful for five months but be unfaithful the next five months. You messing up your blessing. You, woo, you messing up your breakthrough. You, God was about to give you a release on month six, huh? but the devil got in your head. The time you miss her, what's the time you was about to get that breakthrough? But the devil got in your head, the devil got in your mind, the devil got in your pocketbook. You didn't want to release no favor. You, you didn't want to release in sowing into something. You didn't want to release your time and your commitment. And you nullify God's blessing. It's not because the prophet was wrong. It's because you was wrong. Some say you got to be obedient to those principles. 
Somebody look at your name and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, we're getting our ground right. Ground. Say, we're doing a ground check today. Ground check. Oftentimes, they do a mic check, but oftentimes, we got to do a ground check. Ground. We always looking for ground, but what about you? You are the ground. You got to make sure your ground right. I got to make sure my spirit right. I got to make sure my mind right. I got to make sure I'm right, hallelujah, that when folks sow and invest in me, they can see harvest. Because folks don't want to sow and help nobody who they know ain't never going to change. Why should I counsel you in a relationship when you're going to stay with the abusive man? Why? 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 Why, when you're going to stay with the scandalizer, when you're going to stay with the manipulator, when you're going to stay with the cheater, why, why are you talking to me about your Betsy when that's going to continue to be your Betsy when they didn't slug your name all through the street? Don't tell me about it if you don't want no change, if you don't want no real solution to your problems. You don't want no change. You just want to complain. Complaints won't get it in this season in your life. Change. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to change. Uh, we, you got you to change. You got you to till the soil. You got to get that ground right. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get that rate. Come on, somebody. Yeah, that, that, that when the word is sown into you, you can see harvest. Uh, I'm going to preach out into a harvest place. Uh, and when you get in your harvest place, uh, you're going to stay there. You just ain't going to spring up. Uh, but when your hands go up and they stay down and open up your mouth. Somebody shout and they stay there. See, I, I'm trying to be in a place where I stay there. I, I stay blessed. I stay prosperous. I stay anointed. I, yeah, hallelujah. I stay prayed up. I stay fasted up. I, I stay read up in my Bible. I, I stay with my spirit right up. I'm not saying I don't have a couple of human moments every once in a while, but God say I'm trying to get you to a place uh, where you can have ultimate victory in your life, uh, that when you put your hands up, they going to stay there. Open up your mouth and say, I'm going to stay there. Say, when I get there, say, I'm going to stay there. We got two short scriptures. Genesis 26, verse 12. Anybody love the word? I hope y'all like this teaching. I sure hope so. Hallelujah. You, your land, your ground got to be right. Listen, your ground got to be right. The ground got to be right. You got to be right. The ground got to be fertile. Because if a ground is not fertile, when a seed is sown, you won't see harvest. Whew. When a seed is sown into a woman, but she's not fertile, she don't get pregnant. But when a seed is sown into a woman that's fertile, she just might not have one. She might have twins or she might have triplets. Uh, by the way of the Holy Ghost, uh, some of y'all been barren by the way of the Spirit. But by the time you leave, uh, you're going to be so fertile that whatever word spoken over your life, uh, it's going to come to pass. Because uh, I had some unfertile moments in my life before where there was the word spoken on my life. Uh, it did not come to pass because the prophet, it, it didn't come to pass. It's because I didn't make sure my ground was right. Well, it was spoken over me. I was fertile enough to make it come to pass. Uh, this word is going to get you pregnant today. Somebody about to get pregnant. In the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone say, I don't want no more. I'm good. In the spirit, Pastor. Don't speak that over my life. Say, just in the Holy Ghost. Somebody begin to lay their hands on their womb. Say, womb. Say, I'm getting pregnant today. So you can't get pregnant to the mood, right? You can't get pregnant to a certain time of the month. It's called ovulation. And by the way of the Holy Ghost, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this is the right time of the month. This is the right time of year. That when the man of God speak a word over your life, you're going to have something in the oven. I don't know about anybody, but I prophesy over your life that something got to come out of your womb. Something got to come out of your spirit. You're about to get pregnant tonight. The climate is right. 
temperature is right. Oh, and you don't got no time to waste because you need it right now, yo. When a woman met Keisha Kanemoho. When a woman really trying to get pregnant, they got some devices, amen, hallelujah, and, and they say, this is the perfect time. Like, I don't know where you at, boy. You can be at work, or you can be dirty in that field, but I need you to sow that seed into me right now, because this is the time I'm about to conceive, and somebody about to conceive by the way of the Holy Ghost. God is opening up your womb, and the word spoken over your life can give birth to your business. To give birth where you can go back to school. To give birth to your increase. Uh, to give birth to family one day. You'll be fertile enough to get the right man. I can't get no help, nobody. The word making you fertile today. God is tilling the ground. I'm, t I'm getting whatever out the way that needs to be out the way. So I, we gonna, somebody say soil treatment. This is the only scripture I got right here. Then we got another real short. And then we'll be out here. Then Isaac, somebody say Isaac. Isaac. So in that land. Yes, sir. Sometimes I really wish I was Baptist, boy. Them boys know how to hoop, boy. Ooh, sweet Lord. Yes, sir. I might don't got it, but I'm going to keep practicing in the mirror at home. Because practice make perfect. If it don't sound good to nobody but me, amen. Oh, y'all better act like y'all don't practice stuff at home. Y'all practice how y'all get mad at people at home. Y'all, come on. Some of y'all like when y'all get mad. You look in the mirror when you mad. Seeing yourself cry. <sighs> you really like it. When I was in the world, in the world, somebody say in the world. In the world, when I be highly I like to see myself high in the mirror. I'm pretty cool. Y'all, come on. Y'all act like y'all ain't never been there before. Like to see yourself sloppy drunk. Oh, Lord, you drunk as a skunk. Y'all ain't going to hear me talking here. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Thank God for deliverance. Let me see how high I look. I heard one pastor say, I knew how I, I, knew how I was going to look before I cussed them out because I practiced it in the mirror. I practiced the words I was going to say. So I already knew I gave them a mean look because I've been working on it. I can't get no help. The Bible, someone say, thank God for deliverance. Some of y'all know how y'all look when y'all used to curse people out. You ain't that many years away. Some of y'all ain't that many days away. Don't act like you too saved in here. Somebody rub you the wrong. Don't let nobody cut you off. All kind of words will come out of you. Is it worth it? They cut you off. Your blood pressure going up. You can't talk. You shaking. You got to let down the window so you can breathe. Get some fresh air. You going to the grocery store sweating. They're like, what's wrong with you? Somebody cut me off. That's all. That's it. How many people have you cut off? Take a deep breath. You act like you ain't ever made no mistake driving. We got to get rid of this driving, devil. Get it out of this place in Jesus' name. Stand on your horn all day. It just takes pee. You pee. It don't take all that. But y'all need it. don't take all that. Y'all going to make somebody run in the back of y'all. You stand on your horn. And looking at them crazy. Pat Latoya want to go by and look at them. Like, what you want to look at them for? Pull up so I can look at them. What is that going to do? Help me, MT. What's it going to do? <laughs> and they act like they ain't done nothing. They sitting there like ain't done nothing. Drinking juice and everything. Y'all know when y'all make mistakes, y'all act like y'all ain't done nothing. Y'all driving, act like I ain't done. Y'all looking all to the right, looking in the... Ain't nothing in that glove department. Y'all don't want to look at them. You know, good and well, you shouldn't have pulled over like that. Act like you ain't done nothing. You wonder why they're blowing at you. 
But my deal, and we get out of here, why people get mad when they had a green light and you blow because they weren't going? Now, I don't trip. If I wasn't paying attention and had my mind somewhere else, they oh, okay, I'll wait. I'm sorry. They get mad. Some of y'all like that, about two of y'all I see in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, we need help. Stop texting and driving, too. Texting and driving kill more people than drinking and driving. I, I can say life's more than one way. Oh, I can't get nobody in the place. Is it that important? Is it a million-dollar text? Can you pull over? Can you put your phone in your glove compartment? Drink and drive and leave your eyes on the road. When you text and drive, your eyes on your phone. You know how I know this? I took a little driver course because I had the ticket and I learned a few things. I forgot to share with you. But it's real talk, though. Amen. Isaac's soul in that land. See, the problem is you sowing, but you sowing in the right place. You sowing in the land you want to sow in, but you ain't sowing in the land God told you to go in. The Bible told, amen, the word of God, God told Isaac, get out of Egypt and go into Gerar. I want you to go into that land and sow. See, you got to sow in a Pacific place. Sir. You got to sow into a Pacific people. You got to sow in a to Pacific thing. And a lot of us are not blessed because we're not Pacific with the seed that we're sowing. I got a Pacific need when I sow this Pacific seed. And I'm expecting a Pacific harvest. God, I don't need no apples, but I need some oranges right now. So I sow in this Pacific seed that God meets this Pacific need in my life. Isaac sowed in that land. You want to sow into people who are unproductive, but God said that ain't the one. You will never get your harvest out of certain people. Wasting your energy, wasting your time, wasting your life, wasting your breath, wasting your counseling, wasting your words, uh, wasting your sleepless nights. Uh, stop wasting time. Uh, if they ain't got it by now, maybe they just ain't going to get it. It's a harsh reality. Isaac sold in that land and received. In the same year, 100 fold return. Get ready for that table at the woods. Hallelujah. Somebody saw the 100 fold return. And the Lord blessed him. You know how fertile the ground had to be that he sowed in the same year and he reaped a hundredfold return. See, some fruit trees, hallelujah, they don't yield harvest the same year, but the ground was so fertile, glory be to God, that they reaped the same year. I believe the ground is so fertile here by testimonies, not because Pastor D said it, not because Pastor Latoya said it. The ground is so fertile that if you sow, I believe by the end of the year, God got a blessing. And if you be faithful, if you be committed, you're going to receive a hundred and four return. Begin to open up your mouth and say, God, say, I expect 100 fold return. I didn't have 30 fold before. I didn't had 60 fold before. I didn't had 70 fold before. But I didn't made up in my mind that I'm going to try to get 100 fold return. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Say, I believe the Lord will allow me to receive a 100 fold return. My last scripture, go to 1 Corinthians 3, 5, and 7. Hallelujah, 1 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 5 through verse 7. Can I get the church to say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Y'all like how I said that? Can I get the church to say amen? A -a amen, amen. Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> y'all caught that, boy. Y'all catch everything. I can't never switch up on you. I'll be trying to switch it up. <sighs> okay. Who then is Paul? Who is Darius? Who 
who is Apollos? Who is Latoya? But ministers by whom you believe. <laughs> we ain't nobody. Y'all don't like saying y'all ain't nobody. Y'all looking at me. You ain't nobody. If I can say I ain't nobody, I can say you ain't nobody. You don't like you. We all think we want to think with somebody. But Paul say basically, I ain't nobody. Who is Apollos? All we are but ministers by whom you believe. We just ministers whom you believe in us, and we thankful that you believe in us. Because a leader without any followers is a lonely walk. Amen. Walking by himself, no followers. God, can you give me somebody? Amen. One person to believe in me? Oh, yeah. When you know if it's a God, you'll know you have some followers even if you're imperfect. Amen. When you try to do things on your own, nobody going to follow you. Nobody going to support you. Nobody going to have your back. Why? Maybe because it's not of God. Amen. But ministers by you and believe, even as the Lord Gave to every man. Go to verse 6. Hallelujah. I have plenty. Apollos water. But God. Somebody shout but God. Give the increase. Go to verse 7. Hallelujah. So then neither is he planted anything. What Didn't I just say we want anything? So if Paul was anything. And Paul was such a bad preacher. He was preaching for so long. So long. Y'all think this long. Paul was preaching for hours. Uh, and the man fell from the attic dead. And Paul went down there and raised him up. Uh, and went back to the attic and started preaching. Paul was a bad preacher. And I ain't nowhere near bad as Paul. And Paul said, I ain't nobody. Can't, can't get no help. So he that planted is anything. Neither he that watered. But God that giveth increase. Uh. In other words, glory be to God. I'm not going to take credit for your increase my job is just to water our job is just to plant you and to water you in the right direction but ultimately it's going to take God to allow the increase to hit your life uh, you mad at me but I'm just a planter I can't make it happen for you. You mad at me? I'm just the pot. I'm just the water. You can't get mad at them. I didn't do that for them. God done that for them. You think I'm favoring them. No, God told me to favor them. It's just God using me. He using through me. It ain't me, it's them. And God decided to put favor over their life. Don't get mad and jealous at folk who God is using, who God is blessing, because God is giving the increase. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say it ain't me, but it's God. See, when you ain't an arrogant person, you will tell people, I'm getting used like this. It don't really got nothing to do with me. All I did was stay in the right position. I made sure my ground was okay. It ain't me, but it's the God that sent me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's the God that sent me. See, oftentimes, we got to do a ground check. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, is your ground right? And see, when your ground ain't right because there's too much acidity in it or there's too much alkaline in it, uh -huh. hallelujah, you got to, you got to, yeah, 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 you got to invest in yourself and you got to take time to get your ground right. Amen. And this year, somebody saw fertilizer. fertilizer. But I like it because it's an all-purpose fertilizer. All hallelujah. You just not going to be Amen. Prosperous at your job, but you're going to be prosperous in your marriage. Amen. You're just not going to be prosperous at your job, but you're going to be prosperous in your business. Amen. All purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, I'm all purpose. all purpose. It's for flowers. It's for trees. It's for shrubs. And it's for vegetable gardens. Every area in your life, uh, God would allow you to see harvest if the ground is right. Amen. Let's read the directions for use. Hallelujah. Spread fertilizer evenly on the bed surface and work it into the top two to four inches of the soil surface. The problem is we only fertile in certain areas of our life. You got to work it in every area of your life. 
You got to work it evenly in your mind. You got to work it evenly at your job. You got to work it evenly in your marriage. You got to work it evenly if you're a single woman of God. You got to work it evenly in your life. But the problem is we don't like to take the time because we don't want to get dirty. Because to get your soul right, you got to get dirty sometimes. Y'all ain't going to hear me talking here. Hallelujah. But a lot of us are not willing to take the time because we don't want to get dirty. You don't want to get dirty so you ain't ready to reap your harvest. How you going to reap a harvest when you don't want to get dirty? Hallelujah. You got to put your work in. Hallelujah. But let, let me read this. But for vigorous growth. Somebody shout vigorous growth. Repeat applications every six weeks during the growing season. Hallelujah. So when you really want vigorous growth, you can't do this once a year. You have to repeat it. Y'all ain't going to help me talking here. Which means you got to make sure to be consistent enough uh, to do it at least every six weeks uh, to make sure some of us need to check our ground every day. Because one day we up, the next day we're down. One day we're happy, next day we're mad. One day our spirit right, one day our spirit wrong. You got to be sure your ground is right every once in a while. Stop looking at everybody else's ground and learn how to check your own ground. Sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Get the plank out of your eyes. Before you try to get the beam out of my eye. Or get the beam out of your eye. Before you try to get the plank out of my eye. Worry about yourself. Before you try to worry about me. Do, in other words. Hallelujah. I want to read this. Watering suggestions. Because you just don't need to plant it. But you got to water it. See the problem is. We plant. But we don't water. You got to water with God's word. Y'all yeah, 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 ain't going to hear me talking here. Hallelujah. You plant, but you got to water. Amen. You need to be planted, but also you need to be watered. Amen. You be watered by God's word, and you've been washed by the word of God. Amen. Watering suggestions. Since fertilizer left on the foliage will cause leaf burn, fertilizer spills should be picked up and spread out. In other words, don't waste your seed. You're wasting your seed, and when your seed or your fertilizer is not in the right place, uh, it's going to burn some things up around you. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, it say this. Water well to lower the concentration in the area of the spill. A thorough soaking is preferred to a light, shallow watering. This encourages deep rooting. Hallelujah. Rooting will resist heat. Drought stress. Surface drying helps to reduce fungus disease with striving high moisture temperature conditions. Early morning watering is recommended. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me say that one more time. So in other words, hallelujah, in order to, to, to overcome you having drying and drought seasons in your life, hallelujah, you got to make sure the soil is applied evenly. And it has to be watered to a point, glory be to God, hallelujah. And you just don't do it any point in time. You've got to do it early in the morning. I remember the songwriter David saying, early will I seek thee, glory be to God. So you need to check your crown, hallelujah, not in the evening time, but as soon as you get out of bed. Uh, don't check Facebook, but check the Bible book. I can't get no help, nobody. Don't check on your husband. Y'all ain't going to help me talk here. Learn to check on God. You got to make sure your crown is right. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Say my ground wasn't always right, but I made an investment in myself that I shall produce, say, every season in my life. Somebody look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, say my ground is finally right. That whoever sow into me, say I, they will see. Say, harvest in my life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Say, this ain't a mic check, but this a ground check. And say, how good is your ground? Say, is your ground, is it fertile or is it bad ground? 
Will you high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I got good ground. Say, I finally checked it out. I got all the acid out the ground. I'm not a perfect person. And all the mess that was kind of stinky, the Lord said, I can use my mess as fertilizer for my future. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, kiss my past. Well, I flirt with my future. Well, I flirt with my destiny. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, say, my ground is going to be right. Well, I can produce every season of my life. I dare you to stand to your feet and help me preach for about three more minutes and say everything is going to work out for the good of those that love God. You had bad ground in your life before, but now your ground is getting better. You can never have perfect ground. You will never be a perfect person, but you will have purpose in your life. You ought to high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a ground check. I got to check the ground. I don't like what's there. If you know anything about being a gardener, what they tell you to do is use organic material. You got to be original. I can't get no help, nobody. Organic material, it decomposes a little better. It got a little better. And when it's decomposed, that dead thing that you overlooked in your life, what's the thing that helps supply you to live on to the next level in your life? And some of y'all have some dead relationships. But when you overcome that dead thing, but when you overcome that dead stuff, and use your test as a testimony. It'll be so organic. It'll be so original that your testimony will be so real that you just won't be fertile by your own self. But you will show somebody else how to treat their ground. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm treating my ground. I'm treating it with the right stuff. I'm getting the alkaline out of it. I'm getting the acid out of it. I'm getting the pesticides out of it. You see, the problem is some of y'all ground, it ain't no good. What the enemy don't even want to get in your field. Do I got anybody here who had bad ground before? No worms won't show ground. No insects won't show ground. But when you got good ground, you got a worm in there. But when you got good ground, the canker worm try to get in now. But when you got good ground, the enemy trying to get in now. And a good indication that you got good ground. The devil been talking to you. He been messing with your mind. He been messing with your family. He been messing with your husband. He been messing with your kids. He been messing with your boss. That is because not to, that's a ground bad, but that is because you got good ground. When you got good ground, it's attractive to moles. When you got good ground, it's attractive to insects. I can't get nobody here. And some of y'all got ground, but you got too many weeds. You got too many thorns and thistles. But by the way of the Holy Ghost, I dare you right now, begin to pull those weeds out of that ground. Pull the negativity out of that ground. Pull every doubt out of that ground. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I got good ground. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Come on and give God worship all over the place. 
Come on, open up your mouth. I dare you put a shot on it right now. I dare you to open up your mouth. I dare you to open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, give God praise. If you know you got good ground, or if you know this ground is good, I dare you to shout on it. Because the ground you're sitting on is good ground. Oh, it's holy ground. Come on, give God a praise. And stand and begin to shout on it. Good, open up your mouth. Come on and bless his name. Open up your mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got good ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on and shout. If you know you got fertile ground. If you know the ground fertile. 